Hello and welcome to this week's Blender tutorial. During this week's lesson we're going to be looking at how to model a table and chairs using box modeling techniques. For the start tutorial if we open up Blender as normal we see we've got our primitive box before us. What we're going to do this week is rather than working in the lone view we're going to swap our view to quad view. So if we navigate down to the view menu at the bottom and toggle quad view using this option here we see that we're now displayed with several of our orthographic views. So we've got top view, front view and right view. We've still got our user perspective at the top that we can pan around and, and have a good look at our, our primitive. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to assign a picture to each of these orthographic views and that's going to help us to make sure that our object stays within scale of the real world version. So to that end we're going to open up this little menu on the side using the plus icon up here and if we scroll down to the bottom we want to tick the background images section and open it up using the little arrow. Now at the minute there's no background image as we can see, it's just a grey background. We're going to click the add image option. Right, as it comes up we can see now we've got the axes, we can select specific axes if we want or we can set it to all views which is what we're going to do. And if we click open we're going to navigate to where we've saved our, our image. Uh, I've saved mine to, if we have a look, in my pictures uh, oh, there we go and using the little display mode list up here I can view thumbnails of everything in my pictures and find the right thing there we go so we can see up the top there we've got shared diagrams I'm going to click on that and click open and immediately we can see in the window all the different orthographic windows have the image in their background. Now that's fine at the minute but what we want to do is for each window we want to scale it around and get it set up so that for the right orthographic view we can actually have the right view of the share in the thing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set this to right orthographic view which just appears there and then I'm going to move it around using the axis options down here. There we go and another thing I can do is I can scale it up or down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it at 5 for its scale at the minute and we'll work to that scale. That's a that's a fine scale, it's not too big. Uh, what we need to do now is we need to do the same thing again over and over for all the different views. So I'm going to go left view front view there, there we go, so we've got five again using these options down here, I'm just going to move it around so that it's sitting with my primitive roughly over the front of the object, there we go and then we've just got to do the same again for the top view as we can see it does take a couple of minutes to set up but it is worth it when it works So last one we've got our top view up here, so same thing again, I'm just going to move it around so that my primitive is set up roughly over the top of the image. There we go. Now think of this as tracing. Okay, so what we can do with each of these is, because it's now set up in roughly the right position, I'm just going to move this one here. There we go, so it's set up with the back. What we can start to do now is using the tools we learnt last week, so if we go into edit mode we've got our our movement tool and our scale tool here down the bottom with the square at the end of the line. We can start to scale our object around. So the first thing we can do is get it to the right height for the, the seat compartment itself. It still needs to be a bit longer so we move back to the scale tool we drag it out. Oh that's not worked. We'll drag it out on the bottom window. There we go. Move it around so it's placed again. Fantastic, there we go, great stuff. And on this front view as well we can see it still needs to be a bit wider. So go back into the scale tools, scale out the width, move it around. I'm going to go through this continuous process of, of moving our objects to make sure that it's all, 
always in the right position. Fantastic. So, next thing we can do is we can see here, if we have a look underneath the seat, that the seat tapers in towards the back. So, what we need to do there is select the back edges of there and drag them in so it's roughly the right size. And you see I'm using all of my windows as I'm doing this. There we go, fantastic. And Now, once we've got the seat to roughly the right size and position, the next thing I'm going to need to do is start to make the chair legs. Now to do this what we're going to do is we're going to select the underside and we're going to select the top side and what we're going to do is we're going to subdivide them. Press it once and twice and we can see that now we've got the option to select certain polygons. Because we've subdivided that polygon we've now made it into 16 polygons. Now what we can do is we can select several at once by holding down control and right click. Oh. Or shift and right click even. So I select four polygons that are going to be the legs and then I'm going to extrude these out. Now we can see we still need to do a fair bit of fine tuning here. So I'm going to select these polygons on the side here and then there we go. Fantastic. Bit by bit we can start to change that. There we go. So the rough legs are roughly in the right place now. Next thing we can see is that on the side view we also need to make them a bit thinner. So same again, we're going to select the polygons and then using the green arrow only, making sure that we press right on the arrow tip, we're going to transform that polygon and push it in. Now, if we look at this leg on the right orthographic view we can see that it tapers in towards whereas ours is going straight down. So to, to change that we can use the, the line select tool, the edge select, and we can select those edges there, once again, if I zoom in, there we go, and remember I'm shift and right click and select them both at the same time, and once again using the green arrows we can make sure that they look exactly perfect, brilliant stuff, okay. And we can do exactly the same for the back as well. So, so what I want you guys to do is to work your way through, changing the legs one at a time. And with this one here, I need to select those two there. There we go. And it's all using the selection tools. So we've used just the edge selection tool here and then use the transform arrows to move them out. Now that we've got our legs in roughly the right place, we're going to fine tune it a little bit later on. Next thing we're going to do is create the back. Now to create the back we use the polygon select tool down at the bottom. I'm going to select using shift to select more than one polygon at once. Those four at the back. And we're just going to extrude upwards. Now if I zoom out here we need to make sure we're getting to the right height. There we go, so just using the transform tool to finish off. And there we go. Now one thing we could do if we have a look at how the, the shared back tapers, it tapers at more of a curve. So if I press Ctrl and Z to move a couple of steps back, we could move it there, and then we can extrude up again there. Now at the minute it's looking a bit hard because that chair back's a bit thick, so using your polygon select tool. Hold down control and right click to multiple select polygons and once again we're just going to transform it to get roughly the right width. Now if we look at the right orthographic view we can see that it's still not perfect so what we're going to need to do here is use the loop cut and slide tool. If we press loop cut and slide and then what this will do is wherever we've left click now it will slice and create new polygons there. So if I go back to the polygon select tool, we can see that we've created new polygons there. Okay, and we need to do the same again about halfway down. Great stuff. Now using the edge select tool, we're going to select those polygons. Once again, using control to select multiple polygons in line. 
and we're going to slowly start to tease our shape how we want it. Quite a slow and laborious process getting it exactly right, but it's well worth it in the end. Okay, we've really got a couple of fine tuning bits left to do. We can see at the front here that, that their seat has a much larger kind of front area than ours does, uh, and it has a bit going between the two legs. So we could add that in again by extruding down from there. We could try and subdivide those polygons there and then extrude down a little bit or we could even extrude down there there we go roughly the right height and if we select a few of them we could even if we wanted to select all of those and move it forward about halfway although that is deforming the mesh quite considerably there we go so what I want you guys to do is using the picture you've got or if you've download a schematic or a diagram of a, a chair or a table I'd like to start making your own using the background image option as a guide and we'll see who comes out with the best one thank you very much